Hi guys, this is Dr. Bailey from Trayminder. I'm a practicing orthodontist and today I'm going to review with you a little bit about rubber bands. I get a lot of questions from users on what rubber bands are for, how to wear them, when to change them, etc, etc. So I'll just go over with you what I usually say to my own patients. Okay, so rubber bands, what they're for. So rubber bands, they correct your bite usually. That's usually what they're used for. Aligners, clear aligners and braces, remember they align your teeth only. They align your top teeth, they align your bottom teeth, but it doesn't correct the relationship between your top and bottom teeth. And a bite, what a good bite is, is that it's an ideal position of the top teeth and the bottom teeth so that they fit together properly. So remember that your top teeth, they have peaks and valleys, kind of like gears. And so you want the top and the bottom, it's like gears fitting together properly. So that's basically what rubber bands do is that they pull your teeth on the top and bottom in such a way so that your teeth match up basically, okay? Uh, why does it matter whether you have a good bite or bad bite, you know, as long as it looks good, right? So I usually tell my patients it's like having a beautiful car, right? You can have a beautiful car, a great paint job, nice lines, but the engine isn't working properly. And so you can look good, but if it breaks down later on down the road, then that's not so good either. So having a good bite will help to protect your teeth and your enamel so that they don't wear down prematurely. If you have a bad bite and you grind your teeth during the day or while you're sleeping at night, that's really going to accelerate the wear down of your teeth. And we've all seen elderly people uh, with really worn down short teeth and that's usually a result of a deep bite that was never corrected, okay? Um, having a good bite also decreases stress on your TMJ that's a bad thing um also having properly aligned teeth uh, it helps in proper speech and also it's more comfortable to eat and to bite your food so those are the reasons that are that having a good bite is is important okay so then let's talk about the the various ways that people hook up their rubber bands right so the most common rubber band direction it's called class two class two is usually when you hook up your rubber band on your upper canine down to your lower molars that's for me that's the most common direction that my patients wear their rubber bands and that's for people with a class two bite class two bite just means that your top teeth your top incisors, all of your top teeth are too far forward in relation to your bottom teeth. Okay, so uh, most lay people call that an overbite. In orthodontic language, it's actually called overjet. Your top teeth are jetting in front of your bottom teeth. Okay, um, class three is the opposite. It's for people with an underbite. Underbite is where your bottom teeth are too far forward compared to your upper teeth. And that is basically when you hook up your rubber bands from your back molar down to your lower canines, all right? Uh, then there are vertical elastics. Vertical elastics, they are like box elastics or they're triangle elastics. They connect the top and bottom in a vertical direction. Those are usually used at the end of treatment to settle the bite or to kind of help the top and bottom teeth to touch better, okay? Uh, and then we have anterior rubber bands. My patients hate anterior rubber bands. Those are basically a box or, or trapezoid sort of rubber band that connects the front top to the bottom, bottom front teeth. Okay, those are usually used for anterior open bites, which basically means that when you bite down, there's no overlap between your top and bottom front teeth. And, uh, and then we have some that are unilateral. So some people are only wearing rubber bands on one side, or, or maybe they're wearing a class two or class three on one side, but then they're doing a triangle on the other side. That is usually the, 
that means that the, the side that you're wearing at class two or class three, your, your, your bite is off on that side. And on the side, on the side that you are already ideal, you're maintaining it by doing a triangle rubber band or delta rubber band. Okay. Uh, and then we have some patients that are wearing class two and class three, class two on one side, class three on the other side. That's usually used to correct the dental midline. Dental midline is just the center line between your upper two front incisors and your bottom two front incisors. Ideally, you know, the midlines are lined up correctly in a straight line. But I want to preface it by saying that uh, that's not usually, that's not always possible, okay? So don't get too caught up in a dental midline. My criteria is that I want to have really well socked in class one bite on, on the back teeth. Some Whether the midlines are 100% on or if they're 0.5 millimeter or a quarter of a millimeter on, sometimes we can't really we can't get it exactly right. And the reason is because your teeth, the size of your teeth are not the same, exactly the same size on the right side and on the left side. So if you're off a little bit, you know, an eighth of a, of a millimeter, one fourth of a millimeter, that's going to make your midlines be off by you know, a quarter of a millimeter, right? So it's like a ring on my left hand ring finger is not going to fit my ring finger on, on my right hand. My right ring finger is a little bit larger than my left. So teeth are the same. There are certain things we can do. So we can do IPR or slightly slenderize the side that's a little bit bigger to make it a little smaller so that we can match it up. Those are things that your orthodontist can do. And if that's really important to you, make sure you discuss that with, with him or her. Um, and yeah, I mean, another common thing that I see is that some patients have peg laterals, which are the lateral incisor, one side is, is smaller in size than the other side. And so when you have a peg lateral, the only way to center your midline is to uh, build up or increase the size of that peg lateral by a general dentist or a prosthodontist so that it matches in size to the other side. So anyway, that is... <laughs> A lot of information on types of directions of rubber bands now then the next thing we want to talk about is wear time okay so I tell my patients if you're wearing your aligners and you and we need to fix your bite you have to wear your rubber bands too and so for me the standard is 22 hours a day okay so your aligners are on your rubber bands are on the last thing you want is to be done correcting the alignment of your teeth but your bite is still not corrected so when that happens you're not ahead you're not because what that means is that i'm gonna have to order you more aligners to wear not to straighten your teeth but to allow time for your teeth to move so that your bite gets corrected so it doesn't really help if you just wear your aligners without the rubber bands because you're gonna end up having to be in treatment longer anyway. So I always tell my patients that. So be, be, be very, very compliant with rubber bands. I know it's hard. Um, a lot of patients get, uh, you know, the inside of their cheeks, they get rubbed uh, and it can be quite painful. And so I, I get it, It's it's, difficult. So what I usually do is that I tell my patients to start wearing their aligners first when they're first getting started. And I won't start them on rubber band wear until the second or third week because I want them to get used to wearing their aligners first and all the in and outs of taking their trays out, cleaning. I mean, it's kind of a lot. So I'll tell my patients to start wearing rubber bands by week three. And that sort of helps with the adjustment period. Research has shown that it takes about four hours before the actual cellular mechanism of tooth movement begins. So it's kind of like if you are cooking a turkey, right? You have to preheat the oven. It's not like you can pop your turkey in a cold oven and it starts cooking. You need to preheat the oven until it gets to the right temperature and then you put your turkey in. So it's kind of like that. You have to wear your aligners and wear your rubber bands, have that continuous light force for about four hours before 
any tooth movement will occur. So that's really, really important to think about. So I'll tell my patients, hey, you know what? If you are putting your trays in, you're wearing your elastics for six hours, you're really only moving your teeth for two, two hours because the first four hours, it's just kind of uh, your body's ramping up for that to occur. So really important to keep that in mind, okay? Um, now, uh, as far as changing, changing elastics, how often do you have to change elastics? So most rubber bands are made out of latex, unless you're allergic to latex, they have a non-latex uh, variety, but most orthodontists will give you latex rubber bands. And like any elastics, you know, when you stretch them, they are going to wear out. So I tell my patients to change out their elastics about four times a day. So basically um, just, you know, when you take it off to eat, just throw it away and put on a fresh pair, okay? Um, if you forget to put your elastics on, then you can put your elastics on your pinky finger and then after you're eating, you're done eating, you'll, you'll see it. If you're out and you didn't bring rubber bands, then keep your old set and just keep wearing them until you get home. So it's always better to have something than nothing. So remember to do that. And the other thing that I get and going back to soreness is that you are going to feel, your teeth are going to feel sore for the first three to four days, sometimes up to a week, okay? And soreness means that your teeth are moving. Uh, it's like exercising. If you haven't exercised and you start running three miles, you're, the next day you'll feel pretty sore. So don't take that as a bad sign. When you start to get really, really sore, sometimes my patients will take the your aligners off, they'll take their rubber bands off to give themselves a break. That is the worst thing that you can do because what you're doing is that you're restarting that cycle again. And so you'll never get to the point where you have relief. So wear your aligners, wear your rubber bands, wear it through the pain. And once you get past that first three to seven days, then it's going to get a lot better, I, I promise. I had to wear a lot of rubber bands myself. So remember to keep that in mind. If you are taking NSAIDs, pain relievers to help deal with the pain, I would recommend uh, to my patients to take Tylenol instead of any NSAIDs. And I've said this before in previous videos, research have, sh have shown that NSAIDs, they slow down tooth movement by inhibiting um, the osteoclast cells, which are the cells that break down the bone. All right, well, I hope that you have found this video to be helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it to be helpful and you liked it. Subscribe to the Trayminder videos. I'll do more of these videos if you guys find them helpful. Send me a little comment below to tell me what you like to know more about. And I'll see you next time. Bye.